get think we should get going here. Welcome to week eight, technically week nine, but week eight of videos. Uh, today, uh, our good friend Donna is going to tell us about the Bristol Garden Club and the Community Garden. Did I, I get that right? Yep. Yep. Uh, I will say uh, so. What one thing that's a little different, but this one because we had poor connectivity down at the garden. Donna uh, and her niece actually vi did the video the tour at the garden. So she's going to set this up. We're going to show you some slides and then we're going to do the, the video tour. Uh, hopefully it'll come through pretty well. We, we tested it this morning and it, it worked out pretty well. Uh, so without further ado, take it away, Don. All right. Um, so the Garden Club of Bristol Borough actually started uh, when I was working at the Grundy Museum and the Grundy Foundation uh, provided the seed money to get the Garden Club started here. Um, and the reason for that was Margaret Grundy was uh, passionate about her, her own gardens. And so um, we just thought it would be a great program to begin at the, um, at the Grundy Museum. And it stayed there until my retirement. And so in 2018, the Garden Club of Bristol Borough was now a standalone um, <laughs> 501c3 nonprofit organization in and of itself. Um, if we can go to the next slide, Carl. I'm not gonna read through all this, but this is generally uh, the purpose of the club. We like to uh, just beautify our borough. Um, we encourage people to, to garden. Um, we try to provide classes for uh, horticulture and floral design. And uh, one of my own passions is preserving the cultural and natural landscapes here. Uh, but the real big thing is to uh, create community and um, provide opportunities for in, intergenerational um, connections and cross-cultural connections. Um, so these are, these are just some of, the, uh, uh, some of our partners that we uh, work with here in the uh, community. Go to the next one. So, uh, you know, what does the Garden Club do? Well, this is, this is where we started out. We decided that we were going to uh, beautify um, the gateways here in Bristol. And you can see on the upper left, that's what the uh, entryway looked like uh, before we got started. And down on the lower right is uh, the gateway um, after it was first planted. Um, I will say that with the uh, current uh, COVID situation, we haven't been able to get out there as a team and maintain them as uh, well as we have in the past, but uh, hopefully that'll turn around real soon. Um, so we can go to the next slide. Um, this is another, this is a great example of some of our intergenerational and uh, cross-cultural programs. We uh, work with Bristol Borough to plant trees in the community. Uh, the Pennsylvania Historical Society, not historical, Horticultural Society. Um, they are involved with a plant one million trees. So we're trying to get a, one million trees planted in this card, this Northeast corridor here. Um, and so far we've planted nearly a hundred trees here in the borough. Um, so one of the members of our club, uh, he, he joined, he was there with his wife and he said, you know, maintaining the gateways and um, planting flowers, that's all well and good, but I really wanna grow veggies. I wanna grow food. Uh, he belonged to a community garden out in Langhorn, so he was driving from Bristol to Langhorn to attend his, his gardens. And so we decided, well, let's, let's take a look around and, and see, what we, see what we can do. Um, and so we established Adams Hollow Community Garden in 2015. And this has really become our, our biggest program within the Garden Club. It takes up a good uh, part of our time, but also it's the main source of revenue for our club. So what we, and, and you'll see it when we get into the video, but what we found was uh, an area of the borough um, that was uh, formerly used as tennis courts. And they were abandoned for about 15 or 20 years. So it wasn't ideal, but uh, because it is macadam, but we decided to uh, go ahead and we would just make the beds a little bit higher. Um, so a group of us, attended um, workshops down at the Pennsylvania Horticultural Society, the um, uh, garden tenders. 
Uh, Sally McCabe came out to the Grundy Library, gave a presentation, and then a number of us went down to learn how to build a community garden. Um, and if anybody wants to do anything like this in their community, if you're in the Philadelphia area, I highly recommend it. It was really a, a, a very, very good program and gave us a good foundation um, to have the kind of garden that we have, which I think is uh, rather successful. <coughs> So here we have some photographs. We did work with the um, schools. The kids came out and helped us build the beds. Uh, we had a partnership with the borough. They came in with the front end loader and helped load all the soil into the bed so we didn't have to hand shovel all that. Um, that was a big help. Uh, you can see that in the upper right hand corner. Um, and then this is one of our newest additions to the garden is um, Dennis Cockerham from the Buxadelphia Honey Company. Uh, he approached me right after we started the garden and it took me a little while to warm up to the idea um, because I was concerned about liability. Um, so we took time to speak to every individual gardener to ask them what they thought about bees, try to find out if anybody was allergic. Um, if you're working in a garden and you've got exposure to bees anyway, but this kind of upped the ante. His um, hives are located near my beds. I have four beds at the garden, and I just thought, well, that I'll be the buffer between the beehives and everybody else. They have swarmed. We have had some people get a little bit nervous about it, but we haven't had really any issues, um, other than I think Matthew got stung uh, the other day tending his bed. But um, Dennis is a willing uh, educator. You can see him with a group of kids from St. Mark's. They came over for a seed starting program and uh, he explained the um, honeybees there. So, go on. Uh, some of our programs and events at the um, garden is, uh, we try to do an annual covered dish supper. So uh, towards the end of the growing season, people harvest their food. Um, bring it in and, uh, you know, make a, a dish and bring it to share with others. It's a lot of fun. Uh, this night in particular, uh, we have a horticulturalist come in and she walks the, the various beds with people and gives them advice um, if they're having problems and, you know, so that they can have better success in growing their food. Uh, a couple of the other programs down the bottom, you can see a little girl, she's learning about worm composting. On the left is the seed starting program. On the right was our um, table painting program. <coughs> and last Saturday, we had scheduled a, a hyper tofu workshop, which is creating your own concrete planters. Uh, we had to cancel that because Penn State has a, um, they stopped all the education through mid July so far. And uh, this is the blue ribbon that we won from uh, PHS for the community garden. So from there, we'll take a tour of the garden. Hi, I'm Donna McCluskey, a Penn State Master Gardener and the founder of the Garden Club of Bristol Borough. Today, we're standing at the base of the Grundy Clock Tower because we're going to take a walk over and view Adams Hollow Community Garden. Where the garden is located was once the garages for the vehicles for the Grundy Mill that is located behind me here. Um, but before I get started, I thought I'd give you an idea of the setting of where the garden is located. So as we look around, you'll see that it's located in Delaware Canal State Park. This is the Bristol Lagoon. And just beyond the tree line, you'll see that there is a tree line over there. And behind that is Adams Hollow Creek. And it's a creek that runs from the canal over to the Delaware River. Um, it's part of the uh, estuary here. And uh, we're just, our garden then is named for Adams Hollow Creek. So let's take a walk, over, let's take a walk over to the garden. So here we are at the entrance to the Adams Hollow Community Garden. The Garden Club of Bristol Borough was established in 2013 and we 
As I explained earlier, we had several projects that we worked on in town, and we had one particular gardener, uh, Paul, who said, you know, I love helping grow the flowers and beautifying the gateways, but I really want to grow some veggies. I want to grow food. So we started to look around the borough to try to find the best place for us to start a community garden. And lo and behold, we came across this space, which was formerly tennis courts. So let's go inside and take a look. So we're inside of the, the garden now, and you'll see that it's completely lined with uh, fencing. Uh, this is existing from the time that the Grundy Foundation uh, built these tennis courts as recreation for the residents of Bristol Borough. Uh, they operated from, I think, the late 70s, somewhere around that time. Um, and then for, I would say, the last 15 or 20 years, they've been abandoned. Um, but although the tennis courts were no longer here, this was a great space because it is completely lined with fencing. We have a beautiful pavilion here where the spectators uh, would sit and watch the tennis matches. And we thought, well, okay, it's not ideal. It's on the Caddam, but we'll just make our raised beds a little bit larger. Um, so we approached the Grundy Foundation and the Borough of Bristol. And the reason that we had to approach both was that Joseph Grundy uh, deeded this land to the borough with a deed restriction that it was to be used for passive recreation. So in 2015, when this garden was established, we entered into a, an agreement with the Borough of Bristol and the Grundy Foundation uh, to establish Adams Hollow Community Garden. So this is our fifth year, and we're very excited to come to you today on Community Garden Day, June 20th, which is also the longest day of the year, the summer solstice. So when we first built the garden, we built it in three phases. And the first phase is this area that we're standing right now. And the first phase, the gardeners that began with us five years ago, all but one of them continues to garden here at Adams Hollow Community Garden. So we have 123 large raised beds, and we rent those for $25 a year. The small beds, we have 33 of those, although only 19 are rented. Uh, the rented ones are $15 a year. All of the small beds along the fence are considered public beds. Uh, we have various things growing in them. And at the very end of this first row, you can see some boxes uh, that are our beekeeper. In 2018, 2018 we started with a uh, beekeeper, Buxadelphia Honey Company, and he has expanded the bee house and the beehives. And we do expect to be able to get some honey from the bees this year. So as I mentioned, the garden was built in three phases. The first phase was here. We followed up with phase two over here. And then the third phase, we became very, very energetic and we decided to build out the whole rest of the garden. So with this final build out, it brought us to, as I said, 123 large beds, 33 small beds. We have a total of 68 gardeners of all ages. 44% have two or more beds. This year, 2020, is the first time that we've ever had a wait list. Our garden is open from dawn until dusk. And we do um, have the luxury of three seasons of gardening here. So the one benefit of building on blacktop is the garden heats up very uh, quickly in the spring and it lasts way through the end of November or early December. So we can harvest cold crops all the way up until after Thanksgiving. So we're going to take a look at a couple of beds that are finishing up the cold weather crops. 
So here we have a crop of potatoes planted and potatoes can be planted at St. Patty's Day. On St. Patty's Day, you can plant potatoes, peas, and onions. Um, so that's pretty early. Most people don't think about gardening in March, um, but this, this is a beautiful crop of uh, potatoes that this gardener will soon be harvesting. Uh, we'll head over to take a look at some more cold weather crops. Here we have a bed of uh, two different types of cabbage growing. If we can zoom in here, you can see the head starting to uh, form. And additional cold weather crops. We have some beautiful spring peas. Some kale. And then over on the other side here, there are rows of radishes, which is one of the most rewarding things to grow. You plant them and you harvest them very quickly in the spring. Uh, this is black seeded Simpson lettuce. Onions are planted. And then on the very edge there are carrots. Carrots will take a long while to come to um, harvest time, but uh, very worth growing. So along the fence line, we have small beds, and these beds are uh, public beds, which means that any gardener can come over here and harvest anything from these beds. Uh, there's a combination of perennial flowers, uh, some annuals, and uh, this side of the garden in phase three, we've planted a lot of uh, berries and grapes. So we'll start over here with our, our uh, grapevine. You can see that the grapes are starting to form. Uh, last year was the first year that we were able to harvest grapes from the vine. It takes several years to get um, both grapes and berries established in the garden. Um, so we have two beds of grapes and then we'll head down to look at some of our berries. This is a bed of blackberries, and you can see that they've already flowered. Uh, the ones on, on this stalk are beginning to really start to ripen, and the younger fruit is up here on the upper part. So we have blackberries and we have raspberries. We actually have two beds of raspberries. There's another large bed of raspberries over in phase two. And then in the very end, we have blueberries. And as you know, around July 4th is when we'll be harvesting blueberries. So as the warm weather is approaching, uh, a lot of our warm weather crops were planted um, a few weeks ago. And it's amazing that in just a few weeks, uh, the plants have really um, begun to thrive. If you come over and take a close look, this is a plum tomato that's been planted and it's loaded with fruit. And next to the tomatoes is a bed of zucchini. There's a bed of squash. Great. Here we have eggplant growing. And on the end here are pole beans. And the beans are just starting to flower. And you can see tiny, tiny, tiny beans on there. Here we have a bed of peppers planted. Um, here we have cayenne pepper. You can see that growing. Very healthy plant. And we'll head over here and take a look at some cherry peppers. This was new to me. I never saw a pepper grow on a plant like this. I never, I don't think I've seen a cherry pepper grow before. But rather than hang down, they grow up. So here at the garden, we really do strive to have a um, habitat that is just healthy for growing food. 
Um, and in order to grow food, we need pollinators. We need butterflies and bees here in the garden. And in order to do that, we, we have uh, a gardener who is quite generous, who rents four beds every year and grows native wildflowers for us. Um, his, his flowers are just magnificent and all of the people here that garden marvel at the wildlife that visits those uh, native plants. Um, this year we have four beds that are dedicated to grow food for our local, local food pantry. And those beds are here. We have uh, squash and beans growing. There's, there's peas and beans and uh, another bed down there at the end. Um, another thing that we know is that after we grow food here in the garden, um, once we harvest the vegetables or the food from the garden, we have depleted the soil of nutrients. So it's very important to um, have compost to add nutrients back into the soil for next year. So we've begun a composting. Each quadrant of the garden has a composting bed. And it looks quite a mess, but it will turn into that black gold that we need to, in order to grow um, great food. So the Gutter Garden was built for us as a partnership with the Bristol Borough School District. Uh, the students in the um, garden project over at the high school built this Gutter Garden for us. And uh, this year we have it planted with uh, various plants and it is just thriving. Beautiful nasturtiums, there's some alyssums, some violets, some sedum. And all of these also help to uh, provide food for pollinators and try to keep insects at bay. Our beds over in this area are, again, public beds. And most of them are marked by these beautiful tiled poles that were made for us by the um, Bristol Barrow First Fridays as part of the Community Mosaic Project. And um, Pat Buchanan and Kim White um, were some of the people involved with getting that um, going on First Fridays. So they created these beautiful, beautiful poles for us and they really add a little bit of artistry to the garden. Uh, this obviously is a bed of mint. Over here we have a bed of strawberries, which we've already harvested or the uh, wildlife has done so for us. And then one of the most unusual plants that we grow here in the garden is horseradish. So we planted this three years ago and I think that this may be the first year that we'll actually be able to uh, harvest and enjoy some of the horseradish uh, grown here at Adams Hollow Community Garden. So one of the areas of the garden that we have set up for kids is uh, over here in this section and uh, unfortunately with the uh, COVID-19 we haven't been able to assemble groups and do our educational programs uh, here this year but we trust that this will be back in business very soon. Uh, this here is the utility area of the garden. Uh, a couple years ago we wrote for and were awarded a Home Depot grant. Uh, we received a grant and uh, used the money to build this storage shed so we not only got the money for the shed, but Home Depot came out and helped us build. Um, that program, as you saw earlier, was a partnership between Garden Club members, Home Depot, and the local school district. We so that about ends the tour here at Adams Hollow Community Garden. And as I mentioned, June 20th is Community Garden Day. We're very happy to uh, share the garden with you today. Um, 
one of our uh, goals for the future is to uh, install an orchard to plant orchard trees of fruit trees out here on the outside of the fence and um, we will be happy whether our gardeners can harvest the fruit or people that just pass by can do so. It matters not to us. We just like to see food growing here in our community. Um, one of the other two artistic projects that we have going on here is our members came one evening and we had a coloring book painted on the table and people came to help us uh, color in the pages of the coloring book. Um, so these were designed by two of our gardeners who are artists, both Roger and Robin uh, designed these and uh, we still have to paint the legs, but it's, it's a work in progress. It's quite beautiful. And then lastly, we have our yarn bombing, which our bicycle rack was pretty boring looking. So we approached the folks over at Plymouth Yarn Company and they donated the yarn for our yarn bombing and some of our members volunteered their time to knit the pieces for the bike rack and we can show you just out our door right across jefferson avenue is the plymouth yarn company and they were the suppliers of the yarn so here at adams hollow community garden we welcome people to be part of it. We welcome people to come and visit and, and enjoy it. So thanks for visiting us here at Adams Hollow Community Garden. And uh, as an extra treat for our gardeners here, after you've harvested your food and you're headed out to go home to cook and prepare your meal, we have beautiful herb bed here for you uh, to take the necessary herbs to go home and complete your meal. So thanks, please come and visit us. We welcome you anytime. All right. Yay. Donna, that was awesome. <laughs> well, I really do have to thank my, uh, my uh, crew with the uh, camera. Uh, we did our best with a, with a smartphone. So none of us are filmmakers, but <clears throat> we did the best that we could. Thank you very much, Adriana. And Matthew held up my cue card so I remembered and stayed on. <laughs> one point as I went through the garden. Uh, so I know we, we have any questions. Go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, I know we're running a little late, but I think we should uh, make some time for some quick questions for Donna. A question. Um, the composting, do you add anything to that or is it just all leftover stuff? Um, well, actually, we are just using things from our garden. We do have um, uh, a, one of our uh, people, they mow their lawn, they don't put any chemicals down on the lawn, so they bring the grass clippings in, because grass clippings are, are one of the best mulches that you can put down on a vegetable garden. Um, it's, it's just incredible. It keeps the weeds at bay, and then it provides, you know, some nutrients back into the soil. Uh, we do have the uh, Master Gardeners of Bucks County are going to be uh, presenting their uh, master gardener program for the first time uh they'll be presenting it down here in lower bucks county and we'll be sending information out about that what we plan to do is have the compost specialist come out and really walk us through and help us um really master composting because we've had some real problems with people piling crap up and it just it doesn't break down so we need something that we can manage we can get the compost and we can get it out to the beds thank you mm -hmm. Any other questions? When I saw that pavilion for the spectators, the first thing that I thought of was like rainwater catchment off of that. Have you guys ever looked into rainwater catchment? We, we uh, have a Boy Scout group that is part of the garden. We, we, provide, we do provide some um, scholarship beds and some uh, complimentary beds. And the, we, we are very interested in doing rainwater collection. Um, but we have to do some research to do it properly because I know uh, several people have done um, the rain barrels and had some issues with it. So we want to do we want to do some research and make sure that we do it properly. I don't know if Kelly was volunteering, but the, <laughs> the 
you. <laughs> Are you a specialist, Kelly? Do you want to come over and give us some advice? Yeah. Well, I, I own a farm and I do rainwater catchment at my farm off of a pole barn. So I, I am a little right. bit of an expert. <laughs> Carl, will hook, Carl will connect us. Perfect. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> All righty. Well, Donna, uh, this was really amazing. I know you put a lot of work into video and, and um, Adriana and Matthew, thank you for helping. And uh, we'll see you guys next week. Next week, a uh, friend of mine from uh, art school, Joe Sheldon, makes custom guitars. Sort of a side hustle for him in his basement. And uh, I think it'll be a really great one. So thanks. Uh, have a great weekend. Stay healthy. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Have a good week. Bye. Bye.